Hello there. Do you know which electorate has the most conspiracy theorists running in it? The answer is probably no, or Hamilton East. I say no though because, well, we're still getting candidates being outed for their conspiracy beliefs while we're in the early voting period for parties that are likely to be in Parliament in the next term. For example, New Zealand First number 8, she's been outed as somebody who believes in Nuremberging politicians. She's part of the Nuremberg chat group. That basically means they want to put on politicians in a faux trial which will see them executed for their crimes against COVID trying to help people during the pandemic. They only need 6% of the party vote for her to get in. Yikes, don't forget early voting is open now. You can go in, you don't even need an easy vote card or ID. You just need to go in and vote. Do it, do it now. The other person that was discovered over the weekend was Ash Palmer, who is the number 13 list for the ACT Party. And um, yeah, he's been talking about being trapped by the global new world order, dictating what he has to do which is nothing to do with supermarkets and is actually a really old anti-Semitic trope when it comes to conspiracy theories, like a number of conspiracy theories, to be honest, are kind of anti-Semitic in their base. So who would have guessed that the ACT Party candidate was spreading some kind of racist conspiracy theory? But he's not the only one in Hamilton East. You also have Ryan Hamilton, who was cozying up to sovereign citizens and not being too upset about the fact that they issued execution writs to his co-workers on council. You've got Roussel Knapp, who's running for New Zealand First. She was part of that group that organised that meeting. He's been a known conspiracy theorist. She was a big fan of Siggy Henry, this one, that this article from the spin-off once called the worst elected official in the country ever. That's Roussel Knapp. But on top of that, you've got other candidates who aren't likely to get in who have a very conspiracy theory bent to it. You've got somebody like uh, Nathan Cooper, who is actually running his own little political party called the New World Order McCann Party. Again, New World Order anti-Semitic conspiracy theory trope. You've got Tanya Ban, who is running for Loyal New Zealand, the NZ Loyal, or whatever the hell it is. I don't know, you'll hear about them after the election when they complain they didn't get two and a half million votes, because that's what they're sure they're going to get. She's also a sovereign citizen, spreading disinformation and misinformation. And then on top of that, you've also got Jack Geelan, who is going under Jacobus for this particular election. He's also trying to set up his own Republic of New Zealand party. On his radio show that he has, you can actually hear him talking about things like how the CIA is trying to make frogs gay through medication. He is homophobic. He is anti-abortion, anti-woman's rights. He is full of conspiracy theories. It's really kind of scary how one electorate has so much of this going on. It's just... And three of the representatives of the parties that are likely to get into parliament are in this electorate. Spreading conspiracy theories. So if you are a Hamilton East voter, you should definitely, definitely be doing your research and telling other people about what you find and what the information is out there about those conspiracy fueled candidates. And if you're not in the electorate, you should still do the research on your candidates because you never know what's hiding out there. And also, please remember, go and vote. You can register at the voting booth if you are not on the electoral roll at the moment. You don't need your easy vote card. You don't need ID. Get in, vote. Make sure that these people who spread dangerous disinformation are nowhere near the halls of power come October 14.